Hello everyone and welcome to Code Tales, where we design and build beautiful software. A somewhat different video today, as we will focus specifically on Rust. Last time we used the question mark operator to handle IO errors, but it's been bugging me that it looked like magic when it's not that hard to understand. Let's look at it in a bit more detail. So, why does Rust need a special error operator in the first place? Well, interestingly, it doesn't. The question mark operator is syntactic sugar for a common pattern that is mostly used for handling errors, but as we'll see, result and option are just a special case of a much wider and cooler capability. Here's what I mean. I'm going to rewrite Rusted command types to be a struct that contains the command enum and the arguments passed to it. This way, we can have an execute method on it which lets us know if execution succeeded or failed. Since a method can return only one type, we need one that is common for both successful execution and error. And that's exactly what result is for. You can return either OK or error with some data, which makes the return type of the method consistent. Data in OK is the actual return value, data in error is for communicating error details. So far so good. But let's see what happens when we try to call this method. The caller will have to get the result, see if it is OK and extract the value so, or if it is error, it should handle the error. In this case, I'll assume the caller cannot handle the error and needs to pass it up the stack, which is a pretty common idiom. This pattern appears practically every time we have a method returning result or option. And whenever you see such boilerplate code, it is automatic to make it into a macro. Naturally, Rust 1.0 bundled exactly such a macro, called try, that expanded to this much expression and it looked exactly like you'd expect. I use past tense because Rust 1.13 introduced the question mark operator, that is basically a postfix version of the try macro. Try is still around but deprecated since Rust 1.39. In the description, I have a link to the blog post announcing this change, and there you can find the rationale for it. The main takeaway is that question mark is a postfix operator, so we can have method chaining that looks pretty. Here's what the code looks like when using question marks instead of match expressions. The only change is that result handling is simpler. If, in your mind, you expand question mark to be the match clause, then you know exactly what is happening here. That's all there is to it, really. The last bit to cover is the from call on the error value. This is just a small convenience to allow automatic transformation from one error value to another. Here's an example. Let's assume we want to keep the string boolean tuple as an internal detail and only want to return a string on an error. The standard conversion mechanism in Rust is implementing from, in this case, from string boolean to a string. Since we don't own string and can't implement from on it, I'll introduce a new wrapper that we own, so we can define the from method like so. With that, we can now have the execute loop method return result usize fancy string instead of result usize string bool tuple and the question mark operator will do the conversion for us automatically. I think that covers all of it. The important conclusion is that the question mark operator is not magic. It's basically just syntactic sugar equivalent to the try macro. There is nothing special about result or option, other than it's known by this expansion. So why did I start this video by saying that Rust doesn't have an error handling mechanism? Let's look at the original match clause. The real mechanism that this implements is not error handling. It's early return. The match statement doesn't apply only to error handling. It's equally useful in, for example, a fault operation that needs to return early without signaling an error. Here I am adding the elements of a vector and I want to return the element at which the addition exceeds a limit. This is a classic match return or continue case, exactly like the result option examples we saw so far. But it doesn't signal an error. It's just a short circuit for the fault. The control flow enum works together with the trifold method, so depending on which value we return, it knows to stop or continue. And sure, we could use result and a from implementation, but here's the thing. Result is used to indicate success or error, but neither is happening here. This is just returning before the end of the list, that's all. It would be much nicer if instead we could directly apply question mark to our own custom type, wouldn't it? Turns out that on Rust Nightly, this is possible. Let me tell you about the try trait v2 RFC. Two years ago, 
an improvement was proposed that allows anyone to create types that work with the question mark operator. The RFC is called TriTrade V2, and you can find the link to it in the description. It introduces two traits called Tri and From Residual. In my opinion, the names could use some work as they are a bit cryptic, but don't worry, I'll guide you through it. We'll start with the try fold example and then we'll rewrite the command execution loop. I want to apply the question mark to the other type directly and have it return early when it's done. This means I don't need the add method to return a result anymore. It can just return self. That simplifies things a lot. Of course, we will rewrite the closure body with a question mark and the assertion also changes since we get back an adder now. Much cleaner, don't you think? For this to work, we'll need two basic behaviors. The first is obvious. We need to put somewhere the match expression that implements the early return logic. That's what the branch method in the try trait is meant for. It has to return control flow, break, or continue, and its variant can have a different value, which is equivalent to results OK and ER values. The second behavior is a bit more obscure but equally important. It may seem surprising, but there are four type transformations going on in a vanilla match expression. The reason is that we have three types to handle. One is control flow, which functions as a container for the other two types, the one that goes in continue and the one that goes in break. In the match expression, we always convert from control flow to the contained type. And at the end of the loop, we either create a continue or a break. This conversion needs to be implemented somewhere. And that's what the output and residual types in try do. Output is what goes in continue. Residual is what goes in break, which we can see in the signature for branch. We need to be able to convert from this to the actual try type, so the question mark the sugaring can do its magic. The naming here is a bit weird in that output and residual make sense in isolation, but they don't quite work together, like for example, break and continue do. I'm not sure what a better alternative would be, but for me, the current naming scheme takes a bit of effort to translate. Anyway, in this example, other is simple enough that output and residual can be self, which also means the implementation of from output just returns the argument. The last piece is the implementation of the from residual trait, which has just one method that converts from the residual type to the try type. This is also just an identity function for our other. When I look at from residual, I think of it as the from implementation for fancy string we saw earlier. And we're done. This example compiles and runs exactly as before, and it has a much cleaner implementation. With this knowledge, Let's rebuild Rusted's command execution loop. I want to get the bytes processed from a command execution if it's successful, or return early if it fails. I'll introduce my own type, execution result, that contains this information and it will need to implement try and from residual. Here's how I chose to do this. The output is u size because that's the value I care about on success, and residual can just be the execution result itself which will function as the type the caller can get and see if there was an error. Just like other, the from residual implementation is trivial. But for from outcome, we'll need to build up the return value with appropriate semantics. You can get more fancy here if you like, but for this example, I think this will work fine. And here it is in action. Note that we don't use result or option anywhere. Everything is custom types that work nicely with the question mark operator. All code we saw can be found as a Git repository, and Rusted has also been updated to make use of what we've seen here. You can find links to all this in the description. As an epilogue, I want to describe how I see the evolution of the design in this small corner of the language. Rust came out with result, option, and the match expression. Soon it was obvious that a lot of typing could be saved by having the try macro. Then, the question mark operator is introduced which is still syntactic sugar, but it makes the code easier to read and write. After a while though, it starts taking on a new quality. It still behaves like a match expression, but now it looks like it's applied on a return type. 
it was just a matter of time before a new pattern, something like trifold, would provide the spark for someone to think of question mark as applying to try types. And that's how we get to today, where question mark is no longer just an error handling mechanism, but a generic early return decoupling device that remains, in principle, syntactic sugar. Eventually, we will go back to try, but this time as a keyword and block expression, instead of a macro, which will build up on the new patterns that will emerge after try trait v2 and are stable. And maybe we'll see more core types implementing try and from residual. This combination of looking at past decisions in context and the implementation they ended up driving is fascinating to me, because it highlights how software engineering is a creative process. I hope this video helped you appreciate a bit more the importance of design, where to look for it, and how to use it to create beautiful constructions. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.